Good day students, welcome to another lecture in economics. Today we are going to look at chapter 10 which is on measuring the performance of the economy. So let's look at today's learning outcomes. So we are saying that at the end of this chapter you should be able to explain the five main microeconomic objectives, define economic growth, define GDP, and the various elements of the definition of GDP. Right, so let's look at the macroeconomics objective. So if you um, don't know what microeconomics is, or you don't know the difference between micro and macroeconomics, so we have said that microeconomics will look at individual aspects and macroeconomics will measure the economy as a whole. So the first objective is economic growth. So we are saying that in a growing economy, the total production of goods and services will increase from one period to the next. So if the population is now growing and there is no economic growth, the average living standards cannot increase and it will um, not be possible for the economy to create enough jobs for those um, for the growing population. Right. Well, so we are saying that in order now to measure um, economic growth, uh, we need a yardstick for measuring the total production of goods and services in the economy. So now let's look at the second objective, which is full employment. So we are saying that ideally all the country's factors of production, uh, particularly labor, should be fully employed, right? And you're saying that in practice, um, every country actually experiences unemployment. And unemployment has a serious cost both now to the people who are unemployed and to the society. So on the personal level, um, people who are unemployed, they actually suffer materially and psychologically. So they have um, a poor living standard. And if you look at a macro level, unemployment actually poses um, serious threats to social and political stability. So you're saying that uh, a country should keep unemployment as low as possible because although there's, um, you cannot, it's not actually practical to have a completely full employment because sometimes the, uh, the economy can um, can be growing but there's still unemployment that can be caused by for example if um, the country is using machines and so on to or effective equipments to produce so that will still not um, allow the country to employ more people. So the economy can be growing and unemployment is still high. Right. So let's look at the third objective. So the third objective, we are talking of price stability. So you said that um, price stability does not necessarily mean that all prices should always be constant because there's no way that will be possible. And in a market-based mixed economy, individual prices should actually respond to changes in supply and demand. And the process of increasing um, the, the level of prices, which we actually call infl uh, inflation, and inflation is, is, is a harmful effect to the uh, economy. And you are saying that when economists actually talk about price stability as an objective, they refer to the objective of keeping inflation as low as possible, not actually um, having constant prices. So in most cases, um, there's no way that you can have constant prices because if you uh, if, if, if the price is actually determined by the supply and the demand, there's always there will always be um, fluctuation between the prices. Right. 
So an, another objective is balance of payment stability, which we actually call external stability. So we are saying that um, because we have imports and exports, and I'm sure that in Namibia we do export, we do imports, so that we need the, that balance of payments. So because when you export, we have we need when you export or import, we need a foreign currency. If you are exporting something or importing something, you need foreign currency. And we are just saying that uh, we need a balance between those two in order to trade efficiently and effectively. Right. The next objective is equitable distribution of income. Why? Right. So this is a serious one and um, not really of uh, it's a sensitive objective. So some people are for it and some are totally against this um, objective. Because many economists will say that no um, economic, of, economic of growth, full employment, price stability and balance of payments, those are the most um, what? objective or the, they are desirable objectives except equitable distribution of income. So equitable distribution of income, we are talking of equal distribution of income so that you not have people who are um, poor and people who are richer. So we need that um, equal distribution of income. But um, debatable that some it's needed and you are saying that if there is unequal distribution of income it can have it uh, um, negative as well as their po positive effects because at the end of the day uh, people who are more richer they are able to save they are able to invest and so on and they pay tax and again if you look at it on, uh, on another side some people are more richer and some are too poor that those who are too poor they get to live a very um, unbearable living standard so which is not um, a good thing right so those are the main objectives of macro economic so we want to make sure that we achieve economic growth we want to have a full employment price stability balance of payments as well as equitable distribution of income Right. So let's look at economic growth. So you are saying that in a growing economy, the total production of goods and services will increase from one period to the next. And if the population is growing, there's um, no and there's no economic growth. Average living standard cannot increase, and it will also not be possible to create enough jobs for the growing population. That's why. If the population is growing, then we need also economic growth so that there's that balance of employment as well as economic growth. And you're saying that the measurement of economic growth requires a yardstick for measuring the total production of goods and services. And we, 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 we mostly use, uh, and we mostly use um consumer price index to measure the total uh, production of goods and services right so let's look at um gross domestic product or in other words gdp which is also a measure of economic growth so we are saying that you can use gdp to measure the country's economic growth right so the first step in measuring economic growth is to determine the country's total production of goods and services in a specific period. So, and one thing that you can use is what you call gross domestic product or GDP. So I said that GDP, the gross domestic product, is a total value of all final goods and services produced within the boundaries of the country in a particular 
period, usually one year. So this is a definition of GDP. And if you look at this definition, there are many elements that need to be clarified. The total value of all final goods and services produced within the boundaries of the country in a particular period. Right. So let's look at those elements of the definition of GDP. So in the definition, we say that uh, GDP is the total value, right? So is a total value. So what do we mean by the total value? So we are saying that the solution is to use the prices of the various goods and services to obtain the value of production. And once the production of each goods and services is expressed in rand or cents, the total value of production can be determined by ending adding the different values together. So what we mean is we need the value. If you are saying that uh, you produce 10 cell phones. So what, are, what is the value of those cell phones? So if you produce 10, one cell phone costs a um, dollar. Okay, dollar is too cheap, right? If you produce 10 cell phones, one cell phone costs 10,000, let's say. So the, the value of one cell phone will be 10,000. Now, if you have produced 10, that will be 10,000 times 10 cell phones. So you cannot say that um, the total production is 10. The total production will be now 10,000 times 10 because you want to find the value of those goods and services. Then let's look at the word final that we have used. So we say that uh, measure the total value of all final goods and services. So now what final are we referring to? So we are saying that we have to distinguish between final goods and intermediate goods. So one of the major problems that national accountants have to deal with is the problem of double counting. So with final, we mean that we look at the final goods and services produced, not the intermediate, not um, the raw materials. So this is, for example, you are producing, let's say, fat cakes. So in fat cakes, you need flour, you need sugar, you need um, salt, you need oil. So all these materials that you need to come up with a fat cake that you are going to sell, we call it intermediate goods, goods that are used to come up with the final product. So we are saying that we do not include the value of the intermediate goods, but we only concentrated the value of the fat cake. So what we look at is the value of that final goods and services, not the goods that are used to produce other goods. So if you are running a service like um, our college, right? So all the uh, what you look at is the value of the service that you offer, the money that you guys pay. So that is what we um, look at, not the cost of the chairs, not the cost of the Wi-Fi and so on. So we look at the final goods and services. Right. And another element is within the boundary of a country. So we say that um, GDP is the measure of total value of goods and services uh, within the boundary of the country, right? So we are saying that um, GDP is a geographic concept that includes all the production within the geographic area of the country. We look at within the borders of the country. We do not look across borders, right? Then a further important aspect also is to know to note is that only goods and services produced during a particular period are uh, included in GDP. So if you are calculating GDP for 2020, we only include goods and services that are produced in 2020, not the ones that were produced in 2019 and sold in 2020. So we look at that particular period. If the if let's say we want to calculate GDP for, for 2021, right? And we are looking at the total production of goods and services. And in 2021, we sold 100 cars which were produced in 2020. So we do not include those ones because they were produced in 2020. We look at the ones that were produced in that particular period that we are looking at. 
Right, and we also let also know that GDP is a flow which can be measured only over a period of time, usually one year. All right, so um, this will take us to the end of our lesson today, and I hope you guys have enjoyed the lesson. If you do have any question, do not hesitate to contact me. I will see you guys in our next lesson.